everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make a party kit or how I've put a party kit together. Um, I really love this and I'm doing this, um, by the time this goes out I would have done it, so it's a little girls night in for me and my sister. So I have got two party bags, so I'm going to show you how to make one of these. Um, I have done these really adorable little um, straws, so the little unicorn with the silver straws in these little kilner cups um, that I've already got. So they look really cute. I have also done the same little unicorn and put it on this little champagne flute to go with our bottle of Prosecco that we've got each. Um, I have done these little unicorn heads on these little um, uh, cocktail sticks to go in the cupcakes or also the sausage rolls that we'll be eating. Um, and then I've already done the little sentiment and stuff here for the bag. I've I've done all of these little stars which are going to go on the little cake topper that I'm going to show you how to make. It's just very girly, very glittery and just very, very cute. So I'll go through the stamp set and all that lot in a minute, but this is the bag, the gift bag. Really adorable. These would look lovely for a little girl's party. Um, as I said, you know, what I'm doing in terms of quantity, I'm just doing it for me and my sister, but you just need to obviously up the quantity levels for if you're going to do it for a bigger party. So. It just undoes with a little Velcro dot. And then inside, I have packed this out. So I've got, because bearing in mind, this is for a girls' night in. So I've got here a face mask. I have done a, we've got a um, treatment for our hair. So we'll be putting that on our hair. We'll have that on our face with our glass of Prosecco. Um, I've got this nice body spray that I've picked up. Um, and then also in here, I've got a nail polish. This, um, what's this one here? This was new actually, I quite like the look of this. I think it was new anyway. Um, coconut oil for your for your skin. It's basically saying it's a magical multitasker. It can be used as a hand cream, a lip balm, face cream, all that kind of stuff. So I know my sister will like that. And also some Lindor chocolates. So we've got cake, we've got cupcakes, we've got Lindor chocolates, we've got sausage rolls, and we've got Prosecco. Um, so a real nice mix there, perfect. <laughs> So I'm just going to pop all that back in. So it just gives you an idea of just how much you can fit in this um, lovely little gift bag. So again, like I said, perfect for uh, party packs. So let's squeeze, actually, I think I put this in first. And it just pinches off at the top there and then you just fold over the top. And you've got a really lovely bag and it's super strong as well I've just stuck that down on the back so it's all nice and neat okay so first of all let's make or oh, let me show you the stamp set so the stamp set I've been raving about this on my Facebook page this is a new set of um, stamp range um, a, a new stamp collection sorry by Hobby Base and it's called Crafty Panda and this is the Magical Unicorns stamp set I have used it a lot already so it's starting to look a little bit um, Kind of like muddy where I've got lots and lots of uh, stays on on it because it just stains it. If I take it off here, there you go, you can kind of see it a bit better. So you get this lovely sentiment, have a magical day. You've got this like rainbow star, you've got a rainbow, you're magical. Then the unicorn head, the unicorn, and this is another cloud. And that's what the unicorn looks like as the stamp there on its own. So that is what I have been using to death because I've done loads. And let's pop that to one side, shove that there. Um, I'm in my mum's craft room, so um, crafting on tour, this kind of is. Um, so all my supplies are looking different, that is why. So there we go. Right, so first of all, this is a piece of 12 by 12. The paper pack, again, is another one which I absolutely adore, and it's Beyond the Shore by First Edition. And um, it's predominantly mermaid theme, and obviously the shore, so the beach and the sea and stuff like that. But some of the um, papers, like this one here, has just got like a marble effect on the back, and then it's got this really nice, just like stripy, um, swirly kind of background so it worked perfectly with this unicorn theme that I had so I've grabbed that one there so you want to score first of all along one of the 12 inch sides obviously I want these stripes facing up like I've done here okay so just bear that in mind with whatever print that you've got so the first score line is at three and seven eighths of an inch then at five and seven eighths of an inch then at nine and three quarters and then at 11 and three quarters. So you should have a tiny quarter inch 
little tab down here. Then rotate it and you then want to score at four inches and at 10 inches. Okay, so really, really straightforward scoring there. So just get rid of that scoreboard. And then what we can do is just burnish those score lines. You probably couldn't pick it up too well because of the stripy pattern. Uh, again, this paper is a very thick paper. It's borderline card. Um, so again, it's perfect for gift bags um, and those kind of things. Oh, I almost gave myself. Oh yeah, just got a paper cut. Oh, again, that's like the, the dangers of paper crafting. Just see it there. I think I've just managed to not go past the skin there. So again, just score that one. Oh, sorry, burnish and this one here. Keep an eye on my thumb. I don't want to get any blood anywhere. I think I'm okay. Okay, right. So open it up and you've got the tab on the right hand side here. Um, actually, no, it'd be easier if I do it, turn it around and have the tab on the left hand side. So this little quarter inch one on the left hand side. And you will have that four inch score line running along here, okay? And then you've got a little bit of a tab and then you've got a rectangle, square and a rectangle. That's what we're cutting out. So we're just leaving this last square here. So if you cut up this score line here, make sure nice and neat because this is that tab, um, sorry, the big flap that comes down the front here. Okay, that's what this one is. The rest of it we're removing. So you wanna cut down that one score line on this side. All of this is all gonna be removed. So again, that bottom piece, making sure that you've got that little tab on the left hand side, you're keeping this solid square. That's what you wanna keep there. So then just rotate and just literally cut along that four inch score line really neatly, because this is all what you will see. And just remove that. My mum's got these really nice scissors. They're gorgeous. <laughs> They're so nice for um Oh, I think I have made myself bleed a little bit there. Oops. Okay, so just remove that. But they are, yeah, they're really nice scissors. I maybe I might slip them into my um my suitcase when she's not looking. Just remove that last little bit there that I missed. Okay. And then rotate it back up again so you've now got this tab here on the right hand side. And you should have the two inch score line at the bottom and you just want to cut up each one just to that first score line. Again, trying to make sure you can see which one I'm cutting up because I've got the stripes. That one there. And then that very little tab down here, you just want to cut out completely. Like like so. All right, so just remove that. And then, as I always do, just take a little bit off the sides of the, t the, the smallest squares, just so that when we close it, you can see how much I'm taking off there, such a tiny amount, you won't have any of this overhanging. So just take that one and this one, like so. Okay. So that's all the prep for the box. Then what we want to do is add some double-sided um, tape on here. Find the edge of this. Okay. Just hog that along that score line. Like so. I'm not going to use those scissors to cut the tape. I'm going to use these little ones here. Like so. So again, just make sure that's all stuck down and then remove that piece, fold it over and then fold that down with a sticky piece and then this bit here should just perfectly fall down on top but I always kind of hover it over and make sure that the score lines all meet up nicely like so. Okay so now that's what you should have. And obviously this piece is going to come down over in a minute. So this bit here is going to be the front. So fold that up and then fold down the back one. Okay, and then I'm just going to pop some of my tacky glue just underneath here. 
like so, and just pop that one down and pop that one down. And then again, put a bit more glue on there. So, and then put the last one down. You see there, you get nothing overhanging and you get a really nice finish on the base of the box. A little bit of glue there coming over, just get rid of that. Turn it upside down and then you can just push it down, grab a ruler. I'm just gonna grab a pencil there and just squeeze all that down. And then all you have to do is just push in these side bits like so and just pinch that down. So you can go further down if you want and just bring it a little bit more down. Also what we can do here is on this front one, so I'm just going to just round off the edges there. Just again, so it just makes it look nice, like so. Okay, so that's that done for the minute. We'll do the handle and everything. Let's go through and let me just show you how I done the stamping and what I used to colour it all in. So what I've got here is already kind of prepared. So I've just got one of these water brushes. So these are, you can pick these up really relatively inexpensive. Um, I'll share some links. Um, and you basically, this has already got water in it. I've got another one here actually, I could just show you. Um, they come in different, well this particular one, they come in different, um, the, nib, the nibs are all different. Um, uh, thicknesses so this one's a rather thick one that's very thin basically you just screw them off you fill it up with water and then screw it back together and basically it means you don't have to keep dipping it into water you can just ever so slightly it says push on the sides here you just squeeze it and water will come out so really really handy highly recommend that you get these because I'm using watercolour um, pencils so these are my favourite watercolour pencils I don't think I've used them in a tutorial as of yet but these are reefs um, and they're really easy so again if you're someone that's not maybe um, just not very confident in blending or using um, alcohol markers because I'm not alcohol markers I'm not a huge fan of I don't mind them for simple colouring in but I'm not good with blending them but watercolours I love that's more my kind of um, medium that I like using. So I've just selected the colours that I've been using for this. Um, I've already done this one, I've got a few bits that I want to finish with it, but basically, so I've stamped my image, okay, using Stays On because this is um, perfect for using watercolours, okay, so just bear that in mind, make sure you use the right ink, otherwise you run the risk of it bleeding and ruining your image. Um, so basically all I do very very easily again I don't you know I'm not making out that I'm some amazing you know um, artist I literally just am imagining that the, the, the sun or the light is hitting from this angle so this all of this would be in in the shadow basically or creating a shadow so I'm just going around here and just Pencil, using the pencil, the watercolour pencil, to just draw just kind of some little shading really, like so. Okay, so that's where I want the blue. Then the pink is what I'm using for the hair, so I'm just kind of roughly hogging the outside here, like so, and then a little bit around the head, and then the tail, I'm sticking to that inside line all the way down, like so. Okay, and then for the yellow is just on the horn, on the star, and then the grey is just on, just to the left hand side of the hooves, the, the feet of the unicorn. Okay, so that's the prep in terms of colouring. And then with this here, what I would say is grab some, let me just grab a bit of tissue. So just got some tissue here. And always squeeze the water in the tissue. Don't ever squeeze it on your image because sometimes the water on these can come out really quick. Okay, so I'm just making sure the water's flowing, which I can see it is. And then basically just start colouring over the blue, or whatever colour it is you're using, and pull it out. Start pulling it out so that I'm getting a real light blue and a real natural kind of blend. You just follow it all down here. Again, I'm just pulling it out of, getting that as much blue out of the 
you know, bit where I've actually coloured it the darkest and just pulling it away from that. I don't know all the right terminology, I'm just kind of saying what I think is best, but you can see what I'm doing. And the good thing about this is once it dries, you can go back into it again and just keep loading it up. So if you wanted then more of a richer, darker shadow or shading, you can. So I'm going to go back over that again in a minute. And you notice that I just keep dabbing off. So now I'm just going to push the water through again just to almost clean the brush. And then I'm going to move on to the pink. So again, I'm just pulling it away and just again your best always start is again it's that kind of less is more you don't need a lot and because this is a unicorn and the theme it's all it's those very light colors very dusty pinks and you know it's almost like baby pink baby blue baby yellow so you don't need to be really really heavy with it and then again just going to blend out this and the good thing is is then you can use the watercolor pencils dry as well so I'm just going to go back in on this one here a little bit as well, just a bit heavy there. Just soften, soften that up a little bit. Again, just pull out a little bit on that tail. Just, again, just to kind of soften it up like so. Okay, I'll go and do the little grey hooves. Like so. Okay, so you can see already now, if I just bring that up a bit closer, how oh, nice. And that's just, I think that's really easy, you don't have to, um, you know, there are amazing um, people that can colour on YouTube and stuff, especially using Copics, some of them I look at and I think, wow, that is incredible, I just can't do it. Plus I'm a bit impatient, <laughs> I like things done quicker. So now, I can, what you can do is make sure your tissue is really dry and clean, and you just don't blot loads of time, just hold it down and lift it and that will obviously dry it and you can see I've got some like lighter parts now so I can just go over now and just load up where I want that colour to be a bit more intense and like I said it's best less is more it's much much easier doing it this way so I'm just going to carry on for a minute and just so what I've done in. is these ones and then I've gone ahead and obviously I've done all of these and these have all been prepped so again whatever stamp set you're using or whatever theme you want for your party just kind of you know go ahead and stamp as many of those images as you need so I know I need one more of these because this is going to be what's going to go on my box on the front of my gift bag sorry so that one and then it's going to have this little rainbow sat behind like so okay I'll show all the glitter in a minute how I done that as well but just so you can go ahead and obviously carry on and get stuff prepped. I've only done two of these, but generally if you've got um, lots of cupcakes and things like that, you would probably do maybe you know 15 or 20 of these. So great, great for if you love colouring in and stuff, which I do. And then I've got all these which are going to be hanging on my um, cake topper. So now I'm going to go and fussy cut these. So I've just got a really nice pair of snips. You want a nice, real um, fine, um, pair of scissors so that you get a real precise cut. These ones are from X Cuts um, and they're really really nice. So. Okay so I've just fussy cut both of those. I'll just bring them up a bit closer there. You can see them, they're gorgeous. So now what I've done is I added my glitter. So all I'm using is these glitter pots which you can pick up from anywhere that does um, you know kids craft because that's all they are it's just those little cheapy tubes but I find this so the the glue I'm using is this fine tip glue pen by stamping up and it's great because it's got this really fine nib this metal nib so you can get right into the tiniest of spaces and do really detailed areas which is perfect for this particular bit that I'm going to do now so I'm just going to um, just grab I shouldn't really use this but it's all I've got on hand for the minute I'm just going to grab this here so I need to catch the glitter and all I want to do is on these unicorns is I put some glitter running along the inside of this tail like so and again on this one here just running a fine now if anybody knows any other company that does this with this metal nib so it's so so fine I've got the little pots 
you know the little tubes where you put your PVA in it comes out of those I don't always get on that great with them because I find some of the glue I use quite thick but I just love this so if there's any other clear glues that you know any other companies please let me know because I'd like to know any other supplies as well so I'm just going to if I can get the lid off this okay and just sprinkle it over the tail like so and just grab a paintbrush there okay so that's them done so now what's going to happen with this this is going to become my cake topper so i've picked up some um bamboo skewers because i'm at my mum's i've got loads of these back in china but i've purchased these here and mum can keep them now in her craft room because she's got some party planning to do this year so that is going to be too tall but if you've got a really big cake and you need a huge topper then that length is probably fine i actually don't need all that so i'm going to reduce mine down so i've got those two now because i want the the spiky end is what's going to go in the cake and they're going to kind of be at an angle like that and then this is going to hang between the two sticks so before i stick them all down i want to lay out my design because I don't need this whole length of string so once I put it all together I can I'll give the measurements and I'll put all that in my blog but this is going to sit at one end and then this is going to go maybe about there I think that's all I need in terms of the width and then these are going to drape down and just kind of dangle like so, so that's the plan probably got maybe one too many I can use that on something else but that is the cake topper effect now you could have little bunting triangles and you can put happy birthday you can have any kind of um, you know sentiment running through this but because mine's just a party with my sister and it's just a girls night in I've just kept it very um, plain and just used the stamps themselves so that's what I'm going to do so you can imagine now that the sticks are going to go underneath each one like this and then that will be the cake topper so to stick all these on I'm going to use glue dots and I'm going to use probably glue dots for that as well and maybe hot glue for okay, the sticks. Okay, so I've just got some little glue dots here. So I'm just going to pop them on the back of each of these because you just need to, it's only a little thing. They're not heavy. Okay, so that's those all stuck down. So now I can stick, just careful because obviously that's still wet. Again, I'm just going to pop some glue dots just on the back. Let me just cut these off. Okay, so now we can cut off that excess. If you are going to have this maybe on a table where people will walk around the back of and you want it to look a bit more nicer on the back, I would suggest just die cutting some little circles just to go over that, just so that obviously it's a bit more pleasing, like so. But there, now if I hold that up, it's hard for you to see. You can kind of see the reflection of it there. But that is going to look really ad quite adorable actually i'm really pleased with that so i'm just waiting for my heat gun to heat up and then i can attach the sticks whilst we're here i'm going to do these bits so again i'd already prepped all of this and this is like the little kind of embellishment for the front of the bag so i've got this one that's just going to sit over the top just pop it because i've lifted it up and again all of them's i heat embossed one of the sentiments from the stamp set which is the your magical and I just die cut it and popped it on another um, slightly larger die and put foam in between and then I can grab my bag, close it up for the minute and then that's going to just sit in the middle like so. So I'm just going to use some of the tacky glue there. Again, just sit that in okay. And then I've got some Velcro dots here which are by the brand Velcro. Again, I always share the links, so I will add them in. And just, I think they're the 16 mil ones, so they're nice and big. Pop it on the inside there. And then squeeze that down. Once it's stuck, oh, it's not stuck on the other side yet, and to push that down a bit more. There we go, open it up, and then you can really squash it. And that one there okay and then we need to add our handle so the string i've got here or the ribbon is um what have i got seven and a half inches is what you want there and then basically all i've done is just got some of my again tacky glue 
and just sit it on the back. You could use hot glue and just about half an inch down on the back there. Okay, so there is the gift bag. Really, really cute. Absolutely adore it. So now I need to get these stuck down. So I'm just going to stick them with my okay, so hot, just glue. Put the hot glue on the back here. So I've put the hot glue on there first and then put the stick over the top. It's across the other side of my mum's craft room and she hasn't got enough plugs here. So I've got my camera and everything set up. So that's why I've had to do it off camera. But you can see now, oh, that bit's caught under the foot. There we go. How that will look. And then if I flip it over, it's gonna go on an angle like that in the cake. So that hangs, that bunting hangs beautifully. Again, you'll see this much better or you would have in the pictures at the beginning and I'll share close up pictures on my blog as well. But you can see now, that's the beautiful cake topper. Again, I absolutely adore this. I'm just gonna sit that there. So let's just recap. Those are your little ones for your cupcakes or as I'm putting them in sausage rolls as well. Um, I've done them to decorate little um, champagne flutes but you can also put these on little paper cups. Um, I've decorated the straws by just sticking them on the straws again with some glue dots um, and again these will look great um, all kind of in a bundle together for people to take and then add to their drink. I've put them on here on the gift bags. You can decorate so much stuff just with that one stamp set. So again if this is for a little boy just find a really nice um, you know pirate themed or um, can't think of them all off the top of my head now but you know any any theme that your son grandson friend niece nephew anybody likes and you can make these really lovely things so I can't wait to have my girls night in with my sister I'm trying to get this all in the focus for you um, and we are gonna have face masks we're gonna have Prosecco we're going to have chocolate, we're going to have sausage rolls, and I think we're ordering a takeaway as well. But there you go, there you have it. So I think I've explained everything. I'm just looking around me. So um, like I said, I'm in my mum's craft room, so I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone. But I think I've managed to do it all and um, show you what I've done. So we've used the watercolour pencils, we've used the glitter, heat embossing there, made the bags. Yeah, I think I've covered it all. So I hope you like my party kit. Um, very inexpensive. Um, you know, most of this stuff we had, we had these lying around the house, the kebab sticks, these are ours. Um, all I actually brought was the straws, papers, obviously I had, pencils I had, ribbon I had. So it's, yeah, I think it's a good way, especially if you're doing a big party, if you've got lots of preparation time, then you can get this done. So there you go. I've yabbered on loads in this tutorial, so <laughs> apologies there. Um, but I hope you like it. Have a go. And um, yeah, remember to share anything on my Facebook page, Mixed Up Crafts. I love to see what you make. And um, please hit the like button if you enjoyed today's tutorial and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.